Hey, everybody. I am Rick Sellers. I am Wes McCraw, and together we are Primo Demos and Talkin' VoiceOvers. Talkin' VoiceOvers with Rick Sellers and Wes McCraw. Hey, welcome to a special video edition of Talkin' VoiceOvers. Uh, today, in honor of the incredible success of the hit film Barbie, directed by Greta Gerwig, and based on the Mattel toy line of Barbie toy products, we have longtime voice actor Chris Anthony Lansdowne with us Woo-hoo. to talk... To talk all things Barbie and uh, Chris, uh, welcome to the show. Um, you know, with the enormous financial success of Barbie, I think it's made like 162 million dollars. We thought we'd have you on oh. to talk about your time doing the voice of Barbie for Mattel. You did it for at least a decade, maybe more. So, yeah, thank you for inviting me. You and I, you guys are great friends too. So, I this is like this is like hanging out and just. Yeah, right. We're shooting the breeze. (laughs) We had you on the podcast early on in in its inception and interviewed you. So we know most of this stuff, but the audience may not know it. So we're going to go ahead and chat with you about your time as Barbie. So, Wes, I think you're up. Wes is up. I'm up. I'm ready. Any idea how many toys you voiced for Mattel as Barbie? Wow, great question. I, aren't you glad I gave you that question? Just ask me. You know, I'm yeah. so glad because I was lost. <laughs> I was choking. Uh, okay, okay. I'm going to be kidding with you guys. You know it now. So um, toys was starting in the 90s. Um, just to give you a little background, 90s really was the beginning of her talking and having a real voice they did they did projects prior to me like there was a workout video there was you know little things here and there through the years but when came 94 when i started they established a voice so you could identify with that being barbie's voice so that was a very exciting time and what happened was the floodgates opened and they said all right we have a voice we're gonna put it on everything so during that time, literally day one in the studio, we started with, uh, uh, let's see, Super Talk Barbie, which says 100,000 phrases. Mm-hmm. And she, what they did was because technology was newer then, it was the 90s. They would sure. take one sentence and match it with another sentence. So she would right. say, hi, I'm Barbie. Let's go to the mall later with Ken. We started with that doll, and that was Super Talk was, man, she was on commercials. She was like, Super Talk is talking. And then it started. (laughs) Next day, we started doing roller skates, computers. We did did talking watches, talking, (laughs) whatever could talk, she talked in. And it was fun because I was so grateful, man. I was. Yeah. I got to go to the studio every day, go sit in my chair and said, what's, you know, what are we working on? We had probably, I'm guessing over a hunt, hundreds of toys, hundreds of toys. I have a picture. Um, I've hey, seen it. I've seen it of all the toys that you've voiced. Toys. It's a oh. giant wall of pink. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's got computer games and, you know, the computer thing we went through where we did all the CD-ROMs, the Barbie fashion designer, bar, uh, we did Barbie ocean discovery, hair styler Barbie, cool shopping Barbie, 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 Barbie. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, speaking of that, I was going to ask you about the voicing Barbie for video game. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, that was big because just this year, um, Barbie fashion designer was inducted into the World Video Hall of Fame. Really? Oh, that's cool. Oh, wait. I pulled it out. Ready? Nice. Yes. Oh, look at that. Wow. You are prepared. You're a pro, Chris (laughs) Anthony. You got props. You can't see, but there's shelves back there. These are all video games that my daughter and I have. I can line up video games that we voiced. And then there's Barbie, and there's certain things that sit on the shelf. So, I just grabbed it off the shelf and it's fun because my world is filled with just fun things and I like to look at things that I've done through the years and it makes me feel good. And and so I keep keep a few few things on the shelf and that was one of them because they uh, just this year asked me uh, how I felt about being inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. I went, huh? 
Pretty was, cool. You, you know, you might be too cool. You're too cool for us, I think. It's officially. Get out of here. You yeah, already at were. At this point, we're <laughs> going to have to let you go. You're we're too not, big. Okay. We're not cool enough to be talking to you. <laughs> well, I got more, more talent between the two of you than I can count right now. So, <laughs> I got to ask you, are you going to go see the new Barbie movie? And the answer is, of course. People have been asking me, um, what did I think of it? What did I think of it? I went, I don't know yet. And it's interesting. And I'm glad I haven't because now I'm hearing everybody else's, you know, what they think about it. I'm hearing a lot of mixed things. Yeah, so, so but it's what, made what a ton of money. Between that and Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, they're calling it Barbenheimer, like yeah. the two films together. <laughs> yeah. And, and, Oppenheimer, right. Oppenheimer made 80 million and Barbie made 162 million. Oh, I mean, that combo. is crazy. I got to know, when was the first time that your daughter Kells found out that you were the voice of Barbie? Oh my goodness, that was hilarious. Now she is 30 now. And okay. so she was about five. That was really, again, that was the height of her talking. Barbie stuff was coming out. There was a lot of commercials. You know, Talk With Me Barbie was the one Barbie with her mouth moved up and down. I'll have to mm -hmm. tell you about that one. That was just hilarious because the mouth actually opened and talked. Yeah. So it was like there, oh, there was Barbie, everything was. And, of course, Kelsey was five, six, and she wanted Barbies. You know, when I grew up, we had one maybe two barbies because that's how it was you did yeah yeah when you her age in that era everybody had all these little barbies they right had, tons yeah. of them yeah tons yeah. of them including rick by the way he had all the barbies i did <laughs> yeah i also had a real 12 inch talking gi joe with the oh, old i love right. that thing i would play with it in the bath no but I would take it in the tub with me and pretend that the washcloth was a giant squid and it would attack the Joe and I'd have to save him. Mr. This was Bubble. just last week when he was doing this. This was last week. I pour in Mr. Bubble, I get in my tub, bring my Joes in, and I Mr. have a ball. <laughs> okay, that brings up something funny. Mr. Bubble was that pink box with the bubbles on it. Yep, yep. Mr. I loved Bubble. it. Yeah. yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So anyway, we, I interrupted with my with my bad no, joke. So, okay. so you, we're going to get to how Kells found out. Was it like okay. a Santa Claus moment? Like when she found out mom oh, was, it was bad. It was bad. Uh oh. Uh, that that uh, Christmas, it was like, I want Barbie skates and Barbie, you know. And it was like, finally, somebody walked up to her and said, Kelsey, do you know your mom is Barbie? And Kelsey looked at like, what? <laughs> and... And she says, what do you mean? And she goes, well, your mom does, you know, Barbie's voice. And, and Kelsey went, it was like you said, Wes, uh, there's no Santa Claus, honey. Yeah. That's yeah. what you were saying. <laughs> Barbie's your mother. Ah! Did you do the voice right there? It, it, just to sort of make the point, drive the point home? In my mind, I thought, what if I went, Kelsey, go clean up your room. <laughs> oh, my God. Might work. Put her in therapy. Yeah, yeah you probably definitely. it's like the ending of a twilight zone episode like the cookbook it's a cookbook <laughs> a cookbook to finish with kelsey um when i told her i said yeah, she goes are you barbie's voice and i said yeah isn't that cool she goes <laughs> and then i noticed it was kind of awkward a little bit because yeah. Yeah. You know, she had this little jeep where you ride around had barbie on the, the actual hood of it yeah I mean, let's face it your kid has a barbie jeep when you're doing barbie and um, there was a little kind of thing there, but as she got older, that was a little more one stage of it. Then, then she, it became cool. Her mom was Barbie and that was cool. And all the kids mm -hmm. would come to the car when I'd pick her up from school. It was like, mom, you got to do the Barbie voice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It went from like, oh, right. like Barbie blah, to, oh, okay, mom. Come on now, you got to do the Barbie boys for my friends. And I went, Yes, she wanted to bathe in your reflected glory. She was like, Yeah, right. my mom's Barbie. <laughs> so Very I would cool. have all these little girls in the car from school. And we would just be, it was a great time for me because I just, I love kids. It was an easy thing just to be around kids and make them laugh and have fun. And it's mm -hmm. like, I, I really felt um, a responsibility when I did her, her voice to, to not make her dumb or, or, snotty but to be right. like, 
best friend and sweet and kind. And I, that was the nineties Barbie in my mind. She was a softer, uh, best friend as, as opposed to as she transitioned into the cooler, hipper Barbie. Yeah. Right. Mine was more of that, you know, like I said, softer, best. Friend. I think we could use a little softer Barbie today, a little oh, yeah. bit more, I agree. uh, a good friendly, you know, always going to be your best friend and always welcoming and kind of making you feel included. That's a, that was a great thing that you did. And, and thank you. You will forever be Barbie. In yeah. my book, I always sign off whenever I talk to you is <laughs> by Barbie because you will always be Barbie to me. Chris, let's do a little Barbie trivia with oh, no. Chris Anthony Lansdowne. Let's test your Barbie knowledge, Chris. Okay. Zero, zero. Uh, do you know what year and where Barbie was first introduced? I believe it was in the 60s. Am I getting warmer? The You're 60s? close. It was 1959 at New York Toy Fair. 59, 1959. You're close. Yep, you That's were close. Not... Um, Barbie was created by Mattel founder. Do you know the who created her? Uh, yes. Handler, Barbara Handler. Close. <laughs> Ruth Handler well, and her Barbie Barbie <laughs> right and her daughter's name was Barbie and oddly enough her son's her son's name was Kenneth and that's where Ken came from oh so Barbie Wes, can't Ken. you help me with this it's like he's really he's gonna make I don't think he knows any of this let's, 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 be, let's, I did. let's be honest here first off I'll be the judge and I'll just give them to you second off how weird would it be if I knew all things Barbie you know, it would be pretty. Well, that would be, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that would be a little peculiar. I know everything about Barbie. Uh, according, right. to, okay. according to your room, Wes, there's 5,000 guitars back there. I don't see any Barbies hanging on the wall. I should Very have cool. a Barbie guitar. You know, get a get you a, should. A pink, pink Why guitar. don't you have a Barbie guitar? All right. Do you know what inspired Barbie? Well, I do remember she was a uh, originally another doll. Um, before. That is correct. What inspired her was Ruth Handler's daughter, Barbara, used to play with paper dolls that looked like adults. And she and her husband saw the kid playing with them and thought, hmm, there's something there. And they turned it into a plastic doll that was an adult female that you could dress and put makeup on and all that good stuff. And it was a huge head. Well, this I'm supposed to know this stuff. As the judge, by the way, as the judge, I'm giving you that one, Chris. And I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put a sound effect like a like a bong, like the correct answer sound effect. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll do did those you, earlier. Did you happen to work with anybody that had voiced Ken? Barbie's longtime oh, yeah. boyfriend. Oh, yes. Yes. You did. Now, forgive me. It's been a while I'm trying to remember the names, but they were very short lived. Um, we would have a project or something um, like Ken would play the prince. Like I, I did a Rapunzel Barbie and there was like a guy they got to do the prince's voice. But it, but they didn't have anybody that was consistent. It's like next project, there was a different guy doing it. At the Ken yeah. voice, so it's not. It's not like they had a right. They didn't establish you know, a a Ken voice. They didn't actually. Lock into anybody, and I noticed that as I was doing different projects. If if he was playing, you know, Ken was in it, Rapunzel, and I think there was just different. You know, if he played the the male lead in it, it was always Ken, but the voice was always a little different. All right, now do you know who was the original voice of Ken going back to the sixties? <laughs> I, really, I, need a, I told you earlier in the episode William, William. Bill Campbell or yeah, Cunningham William. William William Bill Cunningham who was the founder of CESD a talent agency out in California so he was a big time dude he must have been a contemporary of the Mattel founders and yeah, yeah. worked with them and Somebody said, Bill, you got a great voice. Would you like to do Ken? And he went, I, I sure would. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, when I edit this video, I'm going to cut out the part where you said Rick told you. I'm just going to have you <laughs> getting it right. I'm going to hit the Boeing button. Right. I'm going to get that one right. Wait, what was his name? What was his name? William Bill Cunningham. Okay, wait. Okay, ask me the question again. <laughs> All right. Chris Anthony Lansdowne, for $1 million, do you know who was the original voice of Ken? William Cunningham. You are correct, Chris. Yes. Wow. You are our new champion. All right, bro. Nailed it. 
You nailed it. Very, very, very well done. Wait, I think I have a phone call. Just a minute. Hello. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. a Barbie phone. Yeah. Oh, my God. It is a Barbie phone. Wow. Props. More props. I took this off my shelf, too, because this is a classic from the 90s. This is, is what there... cell phones used to look like. Hi, it's me, Barbie. There. Okay. Nice. There you go. Perfect. When I was recording them, my husband was so smart. He said, you know, you should get a toy. Get a toy that you've done and continue to, you know. Um, collect them. Collect them. And um, I collected a lot of toys. So that's why when I do, you know, special uh, events or I need a photograph, I have all these toys. I have trikes and Barbie hotels mm -hmm. and, you know, just tons of like plastic uh, containers of them. And then I open them. I think this thing's not going to talk anymore, a talking purse. And then I press it and I go, still talks. I do remember back in the day, one of the Barbies that talked dropped into the bathtub. I mean, oh. obviously the little computer chips, you can't have your doll in the bathtub. Right. And so, and so um, I thought, okay, that's gone. That's, God, that's never going to work again. Like in the middle of the night, you could hear it starting to like. Like talking know. Tina. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. talking <laughs> Tina. <laughs> I'm talking Tina and I'm going to kill you. By the way, do you know June Foray was uncredited as the voice of Talking Tina? Oh, I do Tina. know that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, All right, we're I'm back so to the Barbie. <laughs> back to the Barbie trivia. Yeah. Do you know what year the very first Barbie television ad aired and on what iconic children's show? Howdy Doody. You are wrong, Chris Anthony. Oh. It was the what? Mickey Mouse Club. That's the Mickey that Mouse? one too. Yeah, that yep. too. Mickey Mouse Club Mickey with Mouse, Annette Funi uh, yep, a young Annette Funicello, who I was in love with as a young lad. I was like, Annette Funicello. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> she was quite a dish. She Remember was yum, yum. Yeah. When Remember I would see her, movies? yep, the Beach Blanket Bingo movies, whenever I would watch them, I would be like, something's happening. <laughs> she was just very, very lovely. Oh, so. she wasn't. And it was a peach blanket bingo. Yeah. I still have the song, which was funny. If you remember those movies, there was like a um, a motorcycle gang in it. Uh, yep. Eric okay. Von Zipper was the bad okay. guy. Now, imagine this. That was Harvey Lembeck. Yep. I signed up when I was in my 20s for an improv class, and it was a Harvey Lembeck improv class. Wow. And I didn't know. I didn't really know. I just knew my agent said, uh, you know, this is a great improv class. Take it. It'll be it'll really help you. So I was in my 20, 20s and I was all excited for this class. And um, as I look back, I mean, then I looked at him and went, that's him from right. all those, those movies. Beach Blanket, wow. Bingo. And yeah, he How was the he? bad guy. He played Eric Von Zipper. And I think, I can't, Robert Cummings, I think, was the hero in one of the yes, episode, yes. movies. And he would touch him on the head yes. and there'd be a sound effect. And then the guy would freeze. <laughs> you are my idol. You are my idol. I remember him saying that. <laughs> Not only that, I, here I am in class and I'm, I'm going, oh, that's who that is. Oh. Yeah, that would be a that would be a trippy kind of thing to happen. Do you know to be who like, was in that class? No. This will tell you how my career did not really go anywhere because they were got great stars. <laughs> Brian Brian Cranston. Oh wow! wow. Okay. Uh, Walt, Walter White from Breaking Bad. Yes, he wow. was in that class. Um, Robin Williams came in at the earlier part of it, but not didn't stay. Robin Williams. That's wow. crazy. Wow. Okay. Now here's what's so funny is because Harvey Limbick was a really tough teacher. He was this, uh, I remember when you got up on the stage and you're in a group and you're doing the improv thing. He was just merciless. Was that the word merciless? Yeah. He, if he, he was, was kinda... like, he'd go, that's not funny. Wow. That was pretty harsh. Thing. Goes, That's not funny. It's like here you're trying to improv and being you know kind of funny witty. And that was his thing. He goes, eh, that's not funny. He goes, I remember going, Chris, use your arms more. When he's, use your arms. You got great arms. Use your arms. And I went, so all of a sudden I think I'm not funny. I feel like I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. There was a lot of people in there that really launched their careers. Well, yeah. you've had a great career and you've had a lot of fun and you've enjoyed what you've done over the years. I've been and, so grateful. And, and you're going to continue to do even more incredible things in the near future. You. So 
we look forward to chatting with you again and finding out what you're up to in the near future. I okay? love you guys. Please I feel like come visit me again. I mean, I feel, like you're getting, I feel like you're getting played off right now, like at the Oscars. Yeah. You know, he's wrapping it up. <laughs> okay, but I have one request. Wes, pick any guitar. Just do one strum for me. I, you oh, know, my gosh. I'm going to do this, Rick. I, I right. didn't do it last time. I don't care what he does. Just one little ditty. It's right. always magical. Okay. Right. Hang on a second. And then you get ready for your one impression, Rick. Okay. Impression. Your impression. Okay. Here you go. I got to be in tune. I got it. Okay. He's tuning up. All right, hang on. I got some for you. about your impression, right? I don't know if you're going to hear this or not. Sure. I, you can hear pretty good. Here comes the sun. Yeah, very yeah. lovely. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Of course. He's pretty amazing when he does that stuff. He is awesome. Okay. Sunday, I'm going to be sitting in <sighs> Okay. Ready, I hope so. Ready? All right. Who would you like to hear? Do you know SpongeBob? You can do Sponge SpongeBob. Hell yeah! Bring you it. ready? Yes. Okay. Oh, Patrick! I can't believe I'm here. What are we gonna do? I forgot the Krabby Patty formula. Ah, ah. I, I remember it. We're okay, SpongeBob. Just relax. I got it all under control. You know what's really cool is he does that in his house alone, all by himself. He walks around the house. Yes, I do it all the time. <laughs> My neighbors hear strange things coming from my home. Like, oh my gosh! Welcome, welcome to our worlds together. Yes, <laughs> like, welcome right. to the madness uh, that is voice acting. So I, anyway, know, yeah, I, my own daughter. It's like I when she did live here, I could hear sometimes when she got to a certain age, they would send her the same audition, and I could hear her recording, and I'd go, oh, "This is she's rec she's auditioning for the same thing I'm auditioning for." And I went, I "Oh could wow!" Hear her and I was going, "Oh, that was pretty good." I don't want to hear that because <laughs> hers is hers is good. And I thought to myself, it was all happening at in my house. You know, my husband plays guitar. You know, he was your husband guitar, Jerry, right? Yeah, for many years, it's like mm -hmm. there's guitars back there, and it's like he would be playing, she'd be doing voices. I thought we must look like a nut house in here. You know, it's like all this <laughs> crazy stuff. Well, it's a home filled with talent and love, so that's, that's a good right. Thing. All right, Chris, well, we'll, okay. we'll wrap it up here so that you can get out of here. All right, get out of here. Yeah, yeah we <laughs> want to go on, Chris Anthony Lansdowne. You were terrific, and we can't thank you enough. We'll let you go, and right. and that's it. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. And let Absolutely. me know how you what you think of the movie. Oh, yes, I will definitely do that. I'll let you know how what I think, okay? Okay. Th Very thanks good. for doing Thanks Bye. for doing this. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Talking voiceovers with Rick Sellers and Wes McCraw.